<laughs> they are so excited. Everybody's so excited. I think probably the two coolest people in the arena, well, in the country, are going to be the two players out there. Everybody on the edge of their seats. It's quite incredible. This is what the game of snooker is all about. And a nice handshake. And a nice smile. Final frame, ladies and gentlemen. Quiet, please. Jimmy White to bring. Feeling the crowd are going to clap every shot. Too thick a contact, and I think it's going to be on for Jimmy. Jimmy played to be short Eight. on the red so he could open the pack at the same time, but not quite that short. So just the eight points. Jimmy White, eight. Jimmy making a similar mistake to the one that Stephen Hendry made. <laughs> Jimmy White only one. scored eight from that leave. How many can Stephen Hendry make? Six. <coughs> Seven. Not quite as straightforward as it might be. Black obstructed to both pockets. Looking to see if he can get on either of those two reds at the moment. Thirteen. The 
just shows you how clear he's thinking, though, Ray, to clear one of those reds away that were blocking the black. Good shot to get the cue ball just below the blue. I'm not so sure about this positional shot. He could have played that much harder and left a red into the right corner. This is difficult. Stephen Henry, 24. And what a risky shot there, uh, Red, to play it at that pace. Talking about clear thinking, Dennis, and it's the most difficult thing to do when you're under this kind of pressure. One. I suddenly see a chance to score a few. And caution goes to the wind. This one's Eight. far from easy. I don't think he's looking at the plant. There's a red next to those two that might just pot into the same pocket that he's taking the black on. I think he's terribly unlucky. That was a super shot he's played. 16. Well, just look at the scores. 17 frames each. 24 points each. Incredible stuff. Looking composed and cool. And I think Jimmy, though, is going to be tempted into taking a very difficult red to the left corner. But he's got to the final taking these difficult reds, and he's in the last frame of the final, so who's to say he's not right? What a shot he's taking on. Yeah. Well, the crowd knew this one was in before we did, Dennis. What a wonderful shot. But the pace he played at that.
Twenty nine. Oh. Jimmy White, twenty nine. Well, did he see the title there, Dennis? Oh, dear me, that was just a little bit of tension. But everybody's tense. Well, he'd miss one of those in 30. Well, he keeps leaving himself the reds into the middle pocket. 16. Nerve now, a skill. And before he played that shot, I was going to say he's missed quite a number of shots with the rest. He doesn't usually, that one only just wriggled in and forced a smile from Stephen Hendry. face then. No explanation needed. Yes, right. It would be a, a terrible shame for Jimmy White if he was to lose this frame uh, having missed a, a block 30. that he would never miss in a hundred years. But you can't take it away from 31. this gentleman at the table. Nerves of steel. What's going to happen? when it was needed. He's proved it in the past. And once again, this evening. Well, Ray, I'm delighted for Stephen Henry, but I could cry for this gentleman sitting in the chair there. Yes, he carries the weight of so many people's hopes. And uh, I'm sure Many, as I did, thought that this year was going to be his. But not to take anything away from Jimmy's opponent. Stephen Henry has proved once again that he's the best player in the world. He's Embassy World Championship. He's won by 18 frames to 17. 
in one of the best finals you're ever likely to see. Ladies, <clears throat> ladies and gentlemen, I don't know if I can talk either. The 1994 Embassy Snooker Champion of the World and still champion Stephen Hendry. that has equaled history here in the Crucible, and a match takes two people. Jimmy White, please. Quite a day, quite a night. Oh, it's so much. <laughs> I mean, what can you say to add to what we've watched here throughout the day and everything else? I don't know. Well, I, I mean, it's probably the best match I've been involved in and, and ever will be involved in. It was, it was fantastic. <laughs> can I just uh, come across for a moment? Jimmy, um, what can I say apart from happy birthday? <laughs> He's beginning to annoy me. <laughs> no, I, had, um, I felt really good through the match. Um, I had a severe twitch up on the black there. I, yeah. just, I didn't, um, I rushed it. I you played popped that bad. blindfold. Well, do you want to play that? I just, um, <laughs> you know, it's a great match, you know. It just um, proves my game's back in order. So, you know, I'll be back next year. That's all I can say. <laughs> A lot has been said tonight about the sportsmanship in this game of snooker, and I'm sure you would be the first to say something when Stephen refused the free ball. You won the frame and went 16 all. Absolutely. Well, you know, um, there's only a couple of cheats in the game, but uh, apart from that, there's 700 professionals, and, uh, you know, 99.9 .9 are very honest, so that's what we're all about. Greatest. greatest. <coughs> He didn't win it, but uh, I'm sure he'd been pleased to feature in one of the great matches in the history of the championship. I feel marvellous, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, you know, I, I'm obviously I'm disappointed, yeah, but um, I was missing, you know, I was missing sort of a few games. I sort of uh, I got in in the balls and I missed, and you know, you can't miss with this guy because uh, you know he just loves long pots. Yeah. <laughs> Stephen, uh, you love the long pots. You were using the rest a bit more than usual. You'd never have made an excuse about the elbow had you lost, but how is the elbow? I'm not even good. It uh, doesn't even come into it. You know, I've, I've played great snooker mm. with it to get to the final, so you know, there was no question of me ever using that as an excuse. Only worried about you affecting your golf problem. That's right, yeah. It was a, a funny old match. I mean, it started off uh, yesterday. I mean, you roared ahead. He came back at you. Then it was nip and tuck all the way, wasn't it? What was the feeling like out there? I mean, when you suddenly realized it was going to come down to the last. I mean, what do you, how do you fellas approach this? What do you feel about it? Is it just another frame or what? Oh, yeah, just another yeah. frame, yeah. <laughs> uh, no, I, um, I think tonight it had 17 all written all over it, the, the match tonight, just the way it had been going. But um, I thought Jimmy had won it, you know, and, and really? in the end it was clearing up, you know, I thought, mm. You know, the black and he left me perfect, so you've got to think that Jimmy would clear up there. So I was just happy to get another chance and, and managed to hold myself together. I had a slight wobble in the pink with the rest, but it went in, lucky for me. I saw the smile on your face. <laughs> That's right, yeah, well, I, I missed a pink this afternoon, and he's a pink with the rest, so... Yeah. 
Anyway, we could talk for hours about Miss Pinks, Potted Pinks, Miss Blacks, Potted Blacks, but I think you'll uh, all agree that this, we've been all been privileged to be here tonight to see one of the great matches, not at the Crucible, one of the great matches in snooker history. Salute the two players. I know Jimmy's a bit shell-shocked there because he nearly left before wages time, um, which it is. So would you welcome the presentation party, Mr. Peter Middleton, Sales and Marketing Director of Imperial Tobacco, with John Spencer, the Chairman of the WSA, and Mr. Peter Dyke of World Promotions. So, checks. <laughs> checks. <coughs> Jimmy, come forward, please. Up to here. And for, for the runner-up, and Jimmy, come forward, please. For the runner-up, a check for £110,000. You're getting used to these. <laughs> and for the winner, and the 1994 Embassy Snooker Champion of the World, a cheque for £180,000. Stephen Hendry. <laughs> and the famous trophy, won first by Joe Davis in 1927, and won now for the fourth time by Stephen Hendry. <laughs>